When it comes to music in popular anime, feelings of triumphant victory or intense pain and despair can all be amplified not just with the right instrumentation, but also the right timing. Some composers practically have it down to a science, and, well, you probably already know where I'm going with this. Hiroyuki Sawano is one of the most recognizable composers in the industry, and even if you're unfamiliar with his name, chances are you've heard at least one of his tracks before, as he's credited with music composition on some of the most popular anime titles in recent years. Whether it's fantasy, supernatural, steampunk, science fiction, or whatever the hell Kill a Kill is supposed to be, Sawano's ability to create music that seemingly adds to the epicness of what can at times already feel like larger-than-life adventures should not be understated. Specifically in tracks like Before My Body Is Dry, Bios, Allies, even his recent work on Promare. All at once, these melody lines have to compete with this unrelenting power from all sides on their own. And while they may not go with everything to the same extent as You Say Ron or Guile's theme, you can still take advantage of that timing. I don't Most people know what you mean when you mention a drop. It's that moment where either the bass line or general rhythm suddenly switches gears. But when you get down to it, a lot of music we listen to is fundamentally about timing anticipation and payoff. We might associate the drops in techno or dance music with a bass cut or a drawn out buildup, but by that very general definition mentioned earlier, technically, this could be considered a drop. For some types of EDM, it can be seen as releasing the energy that's accrued over the track's progression, but I think something resembling that can be found in a lot of places. As one of the central figures in funk, James Brown developed a kind of rhythmic groove where the downbeat was central, which of course led to moments like this. Whether it involves just a rhythmic change, whether the bass briefly drops out for suspense, or whether there's a build-up section, there's an inherent satisfaction that comes from anticipating these moments. For example, K-pop or Korean pop music is known for its tightly packaged, neat title tracks meant to be the next big hit in their highly competitive market. Taking the bass away for a moment to build anticipation could be done for impactful choreography, or to make the chorus more earwormy. But what really screams Sawano about a Sawano drop? The song starts like any other with a rock style background going between 100 to 125 beats per minute. This is interesting because normal heart rate is around 70 to 90 beats per minute and so anything between 100 and 125 is the elevated heart rate that accompanies adrenaline spikes or working out. He lets the listener grow comfortable with the music until usually the one minute mark before removing the bass for about five quarter notes before reintroducing the melody and then dropping the bass on beat one. You can hear how in Before My Body Is Dry that he has kept the bass rhythm in the silence before the drop. He abruptly changes the familiar rhythm we have grown accustomed to in the last minute to syncopated beats. This is to mimic our heartbeat skipping a beat, further kicking adrenaline into our systems before picking back up with the next measure with the leading melody. He drops the bass right on beat one again, leaving a very satisfied feeling in our hearts that all is well again. <laughs> Layers from Recreators probably shows the drop the most obvious. He takes the bass away one minute into the song, and while the pause is shorter, he immediately changes the rhythm to offbeats, successfully throwing off the listener and kickstarting the adrenaline once the bass comes back on one. Following the 
this logic, you can start noticing a pattern amongst his more popular works. Isolate that moment of silence, time the downbeat at the exact moment the hero is about to make his comeback or when all hell breaks loose, and work backwards from there to make seemingly any situation take on a more epic atmosphere than it might have already had. It's not always a seamless transition. The timing of the visuals will probably always play a big part in making sure it works, but this might explain why these songs are so fitting for shows like Attack on Titan and Kill a Kill, where characters are pitted against absurd odds and are fighting for survival. It's the sense of buildup and release that makes the climactic moments feel satisfying. It's hardly unique in the world of music at large, but is recognizable from most other composers in the anime industry. Having said that, this is anime music, so it doesn't just exist in a vacuum. It's all well and good to listen to Sawano's music just off of the album release. However, how do these drops work in the specific scenes that they're a part of and what effect they have on the episodes of even the entirety of the specific shows they are a part of? When you think about it, all the individual parts of a track might signify completely different things depending on what kind of scene it is, as well as... Uh, ex excuse me, excuse me, sorry. Are you guys done? Are we good? Okay. And welcome to The F*** is a Light Motif by Baron J. In this program, I will attempt to educate you, the generally ignorant and glassy-eyed masses, to the concept of a light motif. Sorry, if you don't really get what my whole shtick is about, well, actually, we really didn't warn them, did we? Okay, whatever. Light motifs are a thing in musical composition. One of my favorites, really, yours too. You've heard them your entire life, back when you were sucking down chicken nuggets from your freaking Happy Meal. You still remember getting the little Darth Vader toy that goes da 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 Holy crap, it's Darth Vader. Oh sh So these light motifs date back to the early 17th century. For whatever reason, composers started using short motifs or melodies to highlight certain events. The characters would sing a certain phrase in a particular melody that you had heard previously in the opera, such as when you saw the big mustachioed guy with a dagger at one point and he went, I am going to stab a dude. And then later when they find the dagger used to kill somebody, they'd be like, that's the dagger that stabbed a dude. Now, as for why this caught on, I'm afraid I'm not sure, and Wikipedia says bupkis. If I had a good guess, it's because microphones didn't exist. Opera houses would amplify sound a bit, but it was still difficult to make out voices and individual phrases, especially because ear hygiene wouldn't have been so great due to all of the germs. Also, these operas were long as hell. Trust me, I've seen one I'm gonna talk about, and it was like freaking four hours long, and I still don't remember half the characters' names. So basically, composers started to write little themes to help audiences remember different moments or characters of the show. Here's one that sounds familiar. If one of you chuckle nuts says, kill the wabbit, I will come to your house and crap in your toaster. That's Flight of the Valkyries. It's from Wagner's Ring Trilogy. It plays appropriately when the winged babes on horses show up to the party. Speaking of mythical creatures and things of that nature, in The Lord of the Rings, every time you see that ring on screen, they play this little <laughs> They're like, that's the ring. That's the theme for the ring. Now let's bring it back to anime with Yuriyuki Sawano. Guilty Crown has a track called Crone with a very recognized melody. Now, if you mosey on over to another track called Bios, you hear this. Same deal, using a particular melody to connect to a previous point in the story. Sawano has this little thing he likes to do like this all the gosh darn time. You know it, we talked about it earlier. It's that whole... <laughs> I have a theory about this. Sawano uses that silence to do the same thing those 17th century composers were doing, but in a slightly different way. He's trying to make you take in a specific moment. Hook your attention. There's been crazy buildup for this fight sequence's song and... Oh no, where did it go? What's happening? <laughs> It's the theme for the character or thing that's happening on screen. Also, Sakuga. Lots and lots of Sakuga. <laughs> In one interview, Sawano's music was described as a roller coaster, and I think most of us can agree where that impression comes from. It's that brief moment when the cart is finished being drawn to the top so you can catch your breath, followed by when gravity does the rest. 
a lot of fans have pointed out that his music can be quite samey between the various shows that he works on. And while that might be a fair point, keep in mind that he does have a lot of projects coming out at once, which, ironically, has only helped make this specific aspect of his work so iconic. Now I'd like to take this time to thank our buddy Baron J for conceiving this video idea and helping us get it off the ground, as well as to Miguo for helping us develop this idea even further. Be sure to check out more of his videos, share your own thoughts in the comments down below, and let us know if there are any other musical topics you'd like us to cover. Special thanks to our patrons for helping us make these videos possible, including Reagan Senpai, Ryan Rodriguez, Seth Phillips, Marissa Lenti, JR Pictures, Unknown Secret 1000, and everyone else currently supporting us. This has been the Cartoon Cipher, and until next time. Wait, why wasn't I in this video?